Victors. My name is Akinwale Shofolabo. Today, I would like to shed light on Vincent Popla, one of the points recommended by Waek, Neko, GC, and Jam. Okay, the title of the poem is, the poem is a non-African poem. Of course, the poet is a British poet, Vincent Popla. Before we give the ball rolling, I'd like to talk about the setting of the poem. Of course, everybody knows that setting has to do with the background of a work of art. The place, the location where a work of art takes place. The era in which a work of art takes place. So let's talk about the setting of this poem. Setting. The poem is set in England during the Victorian era. The poem is set in England during the Victorian era. What do I mean by Victorian era? It is a period when industrialization had started evolving in England. So during this period, there was innovation in England. The poem is also set at the bank of a river that was once surrounded by trees. Apparently, the poem was written in 1879. Please take note. We are talking about setting. Setting has to do with time, the place where a work of art takes place. Remember I told you the poem is set in England during the Victorian era, a period when industrialization had just started evolving during innovation. Of course, it was written in 1879. Now, how do we arrive at the title of this poem, Bingsin Poplar? Of course, Bingsin is a village in England. Is a what? Village in England. Poplar is the name of a tree, most especially a soft wood. So poplar is the name of a tree. Please take notes. Now listen, Gerard Hopkins studied in Oxford College. Am I communicating? 14 years after leaving Oxford College, he revisited a river scene and he discovered the fact that a river that was once surrounded by poplar trees, all the trees had been brought down. Am I communicating? So the poem was written in 1879 when Gerard Hopkins revisits a river scene close to his alma mater. Where is his alma mater? His alma mater is close to where? Binsen Village. He studied at Oxford College. Do I seem to be communicating? So I'm talking about the background of the poem, where he studied. So after revisiting the river scene, he noticed that all the trees that were surrounding the River had been brought down with the force of an heart. So the poem is written in 1879. The poem is written on the bank, I mean, the poem is set on the bank of a river that was once surrounded by trees. Now let us go to analysis of the poem. My Aspen Dear, whose eerie cages quelled. Now listen, if you look at the first line of the poem, the first line of this poem is an epitaph. What do I call it, class? Epitaph. What do you call epitaph? An epitaph is an inscription on the on a burial ground. So the first line of the poem is more of melancholic tone. The tone is melancholy. Okay. My Aspen dear, whose eerie cages quelled. So the poet's personnel was actually sad. He was grieved at the destruction of the word trees. He noticed that the trees that were the trees that surrounded the what? The river had been what? Cut off after 14 years of visiting his what? Alma mater. So this poem basically talks about vandalism of nature. The poet is a lover of what? Nature. Okay, why were these three cut off? They were cut off because of what? Innovation. Of course, you know that soft wood, they are used for production of papers. So they were used for the railway at that time. Remember I told you that it was a period when industrialization had started evolving in England. So of course they needed raw materials for production of some certain things. Now, my aspen there. Now, the word aspen, aspen is a species of poplar trees. Am I communicating? My aspen there. It was actually talking as if the trees in question were human beings. My aspen dear, whose eerie cages quelled. The word quelled means brought down. They were cut off with the force of an axe. Remember I told you it was as a result of what? Industrialization. They needed them for raw material. So the first line is more of epitaph and it begins with a melancholic tone. 
quelled, quenched in lease the living soul. Now let's go back. Eerie cages refers to branches of the tree. What I call it, branches of the what of the trees. Am I communicating? So during that time, the poet's persona had a, uh, I, I mean, remembered how the branches of the tree serve as what? A shade. Am I communicating? That keeps this ray of the sun away. So he wonders why the trees were cut off. Now listen, my aspen deer, whose hairy cages curled. If you notice, you will discover that in the last, I mean, the last word in line one is curled. The same word is used to introduce what? Line two. In literature, we call it anadiplosis. What I call it anadiplosis. When the last word of a line of poetry is used to introduce another line. So please take note. So the poet has employed the use of words anadiplosis because the last word in line one is used to introduce line two. Remember I told you. Now listen. Quelled, quenched, in leaves, the leaping sun. Am I going to remember I told you that the branches of the tree, they serve as what? Shade that keep the ray of the sun away. So leaping sun here is a good example of personification because the word leaping means jumping. So of course, so leaping sun, personification. Here, in this context, sun is being personified. Sun is being given the attribute of human being, leaping sun. All felt, felt. All are felt invariably, which means that all the trees were brought down with the forks of an axe. So it's, dropped, it's talking about destruction, havoc, wreak on words, on nature, vandalism of nature. And if you look at this line, all felt, felt, felt. Of course, this is a good example of what? Alliteration. You can see felt, felt, felt. At the same time, we can also call it repetition. Why do we repeat a word in poetry? For the purpose of emphasis. Please take note of that. So, you could regard it as what? Alliteration. At the same time, you could as well call it what? Repetition. So, please take note on the underlying consonant sign. So, what is alliteration? The repetition of initial consonant sign. So, please take note. We have the use of what? Alliteration. Of a fresh and following folded rank. Now, what does it mean? Of course, we have, we have another figure of speech here. Fresh, following, folded. What's the alliterate? F, there is initial consonant sign. So we have, we have another poetic device employed here which is called alliteration. Now, of a fresh and falling for their ground, which invariably means that the trees in question, they were arranged in lines. Like military procession. Of, of course, you know how a military procession looks like. So the trees in question, they were arranged in lines and all the trees have been brought down, cut off with the force of an axe. Now listen. Not spared, not one. He was actually talking as if those trees were human beings. That's why I said the first line of the poem is an epitaph, you know, which means because you can only use the word spare for either human being or animal. So it's talking as if the, the trees in question the way are uh, human being. That dandled a sandaled shadow that swam or sank on middle and river and wind wandering with winding bank. What is he trying to say here? That he remembered when he used to visit the river scene, when the shadow of the trees, am I communicating, appear on the river bed as if they had what? Sandal on them. Am I communicating? So let us get it. That dandled, a sandaled shadow that swam or sank on middle and river and wind wandering with winding bank. Am I coming? So, which means that he remembered those days when he usually goes to the river scene, when the shadow of the trees appear on the surface of the river as if they had sandal on them. Oh, if we but knew what we do when we do or ill. Of course, look at this word, do. Ew. They are used for what? Destruction, vandalism on what? Nature. So that is why this poem is echo centered. Now listen. Oh, he's now saying that 
The people who cut off the tree for their selfish motive, they are ignorant of what they are doing. They lack foresight. Oh, that means they are ignorant. Oh, if we, but, oh, if we, oh, if, but knew what we do, when we do, or ill. Now listen, please take notes. Let me, let me take you back. On middle and river and winding, wandering wind. Of course, we have another, another example of alliteration here. We have wind, wandering, wind, winding. Of course, we have another example of alliteration here, swamp and sank. So please take notes. There is a repetition of initial consonants and we also have it in W, which is the alliterate here. Now let us proceed. So, if we want to know what we do when we delve or ill, that is when we destroy nature, when we vandalize nature, ark and rack, the growing grain. What is the growing grain? Growing grain is referring to what? The trees in question. The, the trees in question that are being what? Vandalized. Now listen, ark and rack. Oh, look at it. Ark and what? Rack. Of course, ark and rack in this context is an example of what? Internal rhyme. We call it what? Internal rhyme. Please take notes. Ark and rack. There is a sign here. Ark, rack. But this rhyme occurs in the words in the middle. So we call it what? Internal rhyme, not end rhyme. Please take notes. Then ark and rack, which means destroy the growing green. What is the growing green? Words. Nature. The trees that have been what? Brought down. So, please, growing green is another example of what? Alliteration. Please take notes. Then let us go for that. They said, since country is so tender. Now, listen, most of the trees, you will notice that most of the forests, am I communicating? You see them in the countryside. So, they now, since country is so tender, which means that they liken. The, country, uh, the countryside to be what? Fragile. The countryside that occupies nature. Am I communicating? They say it is what? Fragile. And it is the source of what? Food to the entire populace. They say, since country is so tender, which means that nature can be seen in what? Countryside. To touch. To touch up. Now, nature is being personified as what? Ah, they now use ah, which is what? A pronoun used for what? For the feminine gender to personify what? Nature. Remember I told you the point centers on what? Vandalism of nature. It's so tender to touch. Being so slender that like this sleek and same ball. What are they trying to say? What the point implies is that nature is now personified, is liking towards eyeball. What I call it? Remember I told you that this tree, poplar, is what? A soft wood. Is a what? Soft wood. So it takes little effort to what? To destroy the tree in question. Now listen. To touch. So the soft wood, which is nature, poplar tree is now personified as what? Eyeball. It's personified as what? A young lady, because they use what are a young as a feminine gender mm -hmm, to touch, being so slender that like this slick and symbol. What do you refer to as symbol? Eyeball. But a prick will make no eye at all. So if you prick an eyeball, what happens to the eyeball? Apparently, there is what lost of what sight. So. Na nature is what fragile. Nature is very sensitive. That is what they are trying. To, that's the message they are trying to put across. So nature is personified as what eyeball, a feminine gender. Of course, everybody knows that women generally they are weaker vessels. So please, so that is why they personify nature as eyeball, young lady, and they personify nature as what country. They are prone to destruction. Now let us proceed. Where we, even where we mean, to mend our, we end our. Please take note. To mend our, we end our. You will notice that they use our for nature. So nature is being personified. They keep using the pronoun our for what? Nature. Nature is 
being personified as a human being. They say, where we me, even where we me, to end up, we end up. What figure of speech is this? Of course, this is what we call antithesis in literature. What I call it, antithesis. To make R, which means to preserve R. To end R, that means what? To terminate. So these are two opposing ideas placed side by side. So this is what we call antithesis. Antithesis is the juxtaposition of two contradicting ideas. Now let us proceed. So when we don't intend, when we have good intention towards nature, we eventually end up what? Destroying nature, even when we have what? Good intention. So because the tree is what? Sensitive, it's a soft wood, it can easily be what? Destroyed. Now let us proceed. Now they said, after commas, cannot guess the beauty of being. You can imagine. What are they trying to tell us here? They are trying to tell us that unborn generation, so of course, the poet is really grieved and is lamenting the vandalism of nature. He said, after commas, cannot guess the beauty of being, which means that unborn generation cannot guess or have a picture of what a poplar tree looks like because they have been what? Cut off all in the name of what? Innovation. They needed them as raw material to produce books and they used them for railway during that time. Remember, it was a period when industrialization had started evolving in England during the Victorian era. Now let us continue. Now, of course, we have denied the unborn generation the beauty of what? Nature. They, can, they don't have a clear picture of what poplar tree looks like because they have been cut off from what? Existence. Now let us proceed. 10 or 12, only 10 or 12 strokes, which means it takes little effort to unsolve nature. Ten or, by the time you eat the tree, 10 or 12 times, only 10 or 12 strokes of strokes of havoc on self, which means that it takes little effort. By the time you eat it 10 or 12 times, you unsolve, you vandalize what? Nature. The sweet, a special scene. Rural scene. A rural scene. Sweet, a special rural scene. Viewers at home, I, I guess I've been able to analyze the poem. You know, the thematic focus, what the poem entails. The poem entails vandalism of what? Nature. The poem centers on havoc, Rick, on what? Nature. Of course, I told you that the poet is what? A lover of what? Nature. is grieved, of course, is not happy due to the fact that those trees have been cut off for innovation. And he sees it as what? A selfish motive. So, till I come your way next time, I will elucidate the poetic devices, the structure, form, then we talk about language and style, we talk about the themes of the poem in our subsequent class. Have a nice